So I'm Brianna Polino, and I'm interviewing Jim Burns mm -hmm. for the Honors Program. So Mr. Burns, can you start out by telling me what years you worked here? Mm -hmm. I started here in the fall of 1969, and I retired in the spring of 1985. So I was here a little over 15 years. Okay. And can you tell me what exactly you did um, for Yavapai College? I was a music teacher here. I was the only music teacher for the first three years. So I taught everything. I taught choir, which I'm trained to do. That's normally what I would do. But I, since I was the only music teacher, I taught music theory. I taught music history. Uh, I arranged for the piano, private piano lessons for students. I didn't do those myself, although I could have. I did all of what private voice students. I did private uh, band instruments, trombone, cl uh, clarinet, uh -huh. and trumpet. I, I'm qualified to do all those things. Wow! And uh, and so that's what I did. I was on several committees. I was um, uh, on uh, committees, uh, curriculum type committees. Everything was new. Everything had to be done from scratch. There were no books we could open up, and this is what we're going to do. We had to make plans then. Right. So the uh, uh, I became <clears throat> division chairman of the fine arts division. I was that I was held that capacity for four years, and wonder how I could do that without owning a computer. Well, nobody <laughs> had a computer, and it was a big thing when the word processors came in. Everybody was talking about word processors. I didn't know what a word processor was, and uh, I've never had one. I uh, I play piano, but I don't know how to type. <laughs> <laughs> and I go back. I had my first year of teaching in the fall of 1950. Oh, wow. And then uh, I was out a couple of years for the Korean War, and uh, when I got out of the service, uh, I came here. And I got a job here in Prescott. And I was teaching only elementary then for three years. Then I went to the high school where I stayed until uh, it was time to come here and uh, start this new faculty and new college here. So why did you help start Yavapai College? Was, was it something that you really wanted to see happen, a community college, or what? why Yavapai? Why did I want to come to Yavapai yeah. to teach? It was right here. <laughs> I raised my children here. We have our home here. The job was here. Mm -hmm. They wanted me to come, and it was a challenge. Yeah. There. <laughs> when my children come home, it's like they never left. They walk in the house. It's everything's where they left it from the time they were born. That's where they remember it. <laughs> wow. So you helped found Yavapai College, correct? Yes. So in fact, I was on some of the committees long before the college was even built, before we broke ground for it. Was there a lot of um, support from the community? There was support from the community. From You see, this college represents all of Yavapai County. This is a community, a county community college, right. not a city community college. And uh, we had to have it put to a vote when before this college was built, where was it going to be built? The the people of Yavapai County could vote on that. Shall it be built in the Verde Valley, or will it be built here in Prescott? Well, the vote was a very thin margin for it to be built here in Prescott, probably less than 50 votes. Oh wow! It could have, this college could have been in uh, uh, in Sedona right now. Wow. Or maybe Camp Verde, or maybe Cottonwood, uh, <laughs> something because uh, the the really the people in the Verde Valley and over the mountain we say really wanted this college over there. We wanted it here, and this was the best place for it. Mm -hmm. And now they have a branch college over there, right? And uh, so that's that's what happened before this college even opened. We had to have that vote, and we just held our breath. Mm -hmm. And whew, it, we we barely made it to have it here in Prescott. So did the music program start with the college, or was mm -hmm. that something that you had to start separately? No, I started it right with the college. So the first day of classes, we had music classes. Wow. They were all set up, and that was me. <laughs> and what were all the music classes that you Red had? Red choir, 
had a small band, we had music history, and we had music theory. All and those things. Did you have a separate building for it, or like a uh, upstairs in the building behind us and the gym? The gym still down there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. The music department was just above the gym. Okay. Is the swimming pool t still there? Yes. <laughs> okay. My classroom was mm -hmm. directly above that swimming pool. Oh wow. And uh, we had all, it was built as a music room. We had little tiny rooms, smaller than this, with a piano in them for practice rooms. Mm -hmm. And those rooms, I guess, are still there. They're soundproof and all that. Oh, wow. Now, we have uh, all kinds, that all took, that all phased out when they built the performance hall. When did they build the but, performance uh, hall? Oh, my. Let's see. It was probably built... 1990, about 98, 99. I can't, oh, okay. I can't be sure. It doesn't say in here, of course. And, uh, but that was about the, the, that performance hall has been there for over 10 years. Wow. And I keep track of it because I know how all the pianos are, which I take care of. Right. There. <laughs> we have two. I wish I could show you the pianos because unless you know what a concert grand piano is, it's uh, nine feet long. Mm -hmm. It's lo it's as longer than here to that wall, and we have two of those big sine waves. Oh, wow! And the artist can come in and choose whichever instrument he likes to play. Not no two pianos are alike. Mm -hmm. They're like a guitar, or violin, or something <laughs> like that. You know? uh -huh. When I talk softly like this, uh, is this picking me up? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the most challenging thing about starting Yabify College or starting the music program? Oh, well, it was a little different uh, here because I had a flourishing music program at Prescott High School. Okay. And uh, I had uh, a fine man that I worked with over there who was the instrumental director. I did all the choral music. I had a very extensive Develop, extensively developed choral program at Prescott High School. I had three big choirs. I had a girls' chorus. I had a men's chorus. Mm -hmm. I had small vocal ensembles called madrigals. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of those. And so when I came over here, a lot of my students who were gradu graduated that year from Prescott High School came with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that well, helps. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that gave me a, a lot of boost there because they were here with me for two years. And then a lot of the students that were in Prescott High School, even two years after that, were interested in coming to Yellow Pike College. A wonderful place to come because it's right here in town. Mm -hmm. and you can take all your classes here and it will be transferred to a university. You can go your first two years here and stay at home. Right. And... Uh, be with your parents. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people wanted to stay home. A lot of people didn't. So my daughters did not want to stay home, partly because I was a teacher here. <laughs> they had had enough of me in high school, <laughs> Prescott High School. <laughs> so they went. one went to NAU and one went to ASU there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so did you have any um, any walls that you hit trying to start the music program, or was it pretty much smooth sailing? And did you have to go through a lot of hoops to get it, or to get the program to going? get the program going? Mm -hmm. Well, no, because of my reputation mm -hmm. at Prescott High School and throughout the state, really, that I was well known throughout the whole state of Arizona. Not as much now because all those people have retired or died. They knew <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, I was pretty much left alone to do what I wanted to do. And they trusted me, and it was, well, if they did, I, it turned out well. Did you so have I, I developed it just the way I wanted it. <laughs> did you have a lot of trouble getting resources, like instruments and... No, uh, they were very, uh, they gave me a lot of money to work with. I bought a lot of instruments. I had to buy music racks. I had to buy music chairs. Mm -hmm. I had to buy, at that time when it actually opened I had to buy five pianos. Oh wow. I had to buy one grand piano and uh, no, excuse me. One, two, three, four, about six pianos, one big grand piano which is still in the music room and uh four no that still makes five. Four uh upright pianos 
that were put in these little practice rooms. Right. And I, uh, I had a lot of friends who were teachers at the universities, both Arizona, uh, University of Arizona and ASU both. Okay. And I had, there were other community colleges. Glendale Community College was well established. Mesa Community College was well established at that time. They were the only two that were really well established. And they were, the teachers in those schools were my close friends. So mm-hmm. they helped me set up the uh, curriculum and the courses here. The oh. kind of textbooks we would use. Mm-hmm. Uh, it had, I had all kinds of help uh, that way. And I didn't have to ask for it. I didn't have to ask for money. Uh, you know, a tuba costs a thousand dollars. Right. And we needed a tuba. So, okay, go ahead and get it. We needed music uh, risers, you know, to stand on. Mm-hmm. So we don't have any risers. Okay, order them. We'll, we'll pay for them. And uh, I got the ones that they're still using. Some of them in the choir department. And then there's some great big ones that are this wide that they use on the stage. And the, those are still here. I unpacked them right out here in this lobby to the gymnasium, and one of the basketball players was assigned by the coach to help me. He didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we, it was a small school. We only had about 600 people here to start with. Uh-huh. And I don't know what the enrollment is now, because you, whether they would count to, uh, extension courses out spreading out there's extension classes of Baghdad there's some at Tuba City on the reservation that you know places like that and so sometimes they would count those but I think on campus here uh, actual count was around a 600 probably mm-hmm. the first two years how many students would you say participate in the music program when it first started oh the participation was fairly small Except for my choral groups, mm-hmm. uh, because they were large, because all of these kids had come with me. Right. But I had to go out and recruit. Uh, I, I wasn't uh, too aggressive in recruiting band students, because uh, we needed to go a little more slowly with that. Mm-hmm. Now, in, uh, so I, I built the program. I, I built the beginning of the program. Then there was a wonderful man who... Uh, taught at East High School in Phoenix, and they closed that high school. And he was a friend of mine, and he was a wonderful instrumental teacher. And so I went out after him, because mm-hmm. he didn't have a job right then. And the board agreed to hire him. He was my choice. His name was Richard Longfield. Mm-hmm. And he did a wonderful job. He built a big band. He built a big orchestra. He took oh. over the uh, uh, the private uh, instrumental lessons, mm-hmm. I, I kept the piano students, I, or remained in charge of it. I didn't teach very much piano. Uh, I found people in the community that uh, could do that part-time. Mm-hmm. And so that's how that worked. Now, I should re- remind, a lot of people have forgotten that this, when this college opened, these buildings were not ready. Oh, really? They weren't even habitable. They, we had had a very, very difficult winter. A lot of rain. I can remember those big cement trucks buried clear to the frames out here oh in gosh. mud. And they bring in these big caterpillar tractors to pull them out. And so, uh, we had, this college was scattered all over Prescott. We had rooms that were available to us, empty rooms at Whipple Veterans Hospital over here. Oh, wow. And in the outer buildings, mm-hmm. all of the liberal arts, all of the English and all of the history was in, if you drive into Whipple, the first big building on the left. That's not part of the actual hospital. These are administrative buildings. We used almost that whole building for mm-hmm. English, history, and humanities. How long did that last? That, uh, until we opened, they, we, I had my first classes in the new music room above the swimming pool probably in April. Oh, wow. And uh, I had, uh, at that time, if you go downtown, go down Gurley Street, there's a big building. That's where the jail is. You mm-hmm. know where the jail is? Yes. And across the street is a church called uh, uh, the uh, Congregational Church. Mm-hmm. All right, we, the Congregational Church let us use their basement rooms. Mm-hmm. 
that big building across the street that was jail is no longer there. It was torn down. It was an old, old brick building that originally was the high school in Prescott. And then it became the junior high school. And then uh, we uh, built a new high school in Ruth Street. Mm-hmm. And that opened in 1966. And when that opened then they didn't have any more classes in this old building. So it was standing there empty, and they used it as a boys' club. The boys could go there and play and act ugly and whatever it is else they did, you know, out of school, to so keep them off the streets. Right. And uh, so that's what that was used. But uh, I was given a classroom by the public schools. That belonged to the public schools uh, in the city of Prescott. Mm-hmm. And they gave me a large classroom. It was as big as out here. And they furnished it for me. From oh, wow. the, uh, all of the teachers in this college were envious of me because I had taught at the high school for 17 years in the public schools. And the school superintendent would say, go over to the warehouse and pick out what you want. There were desks. <laughs> there was chairs. I had everything I needed. Oh, wow. And uh, we had our choir rehearsals in that room as well. I had a okay. piano in there. The grand piano was no place for it, and so it was housed in the sanctuary of that congregational church across the street, really? and they used it all the rest of the school year. We finally moved it into this music room, oh, after April sometime, because we weren't quite ready to get it in there, but I was holding classes in there, and that has all changed so much. So they still have the nursing up and down the hallways over there, up above mm-hmm. the, the uh, gym? Yeah. Okay. And that hasn't changed. That's who I was at odds with most of the time because of the noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loud drums. Yeah. Band crash. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the campus environment like? It was a, since it was very small, everyone knew everyone else. Okay. And it was a wonderful place to be. Mm-hmm. Now, as you look around, if you, you have attended school here or attending now, mm-hmm. and you go out and, and uh, when school is in full session, how many of these people do you know? You know, yeah. a few of them. Yeah. The ones who you work with. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody knew everyone else. Oh. All the kids knew me. I knew most of them, even though I didn't have them in my classes, right. because the school was so small. It was a wonderful place to be. And then it, it grew little by little each year, and mm-hmm. we were able to adjust with it as it grew. Did you have the same kind of... Um Offices and like security and well, uh, the offices. My office was in that top floor, on the corner over there, and it probably was about from here to the wall over there. And that was a, my desk up and went in a file case, a chair over here, and my chair behind the desk. And that was it. Oh wow! And nearly all of the teachers had a little we call them cubicles mm-hmm. like that. Uh, up above where we are right now. Do they still have that row of offices on the yes. outer? Okay, those were teachers' offices. Little tiny, little tiny rooms. I don't know what they use them for now. Um, actually, they still are teachers' offices. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you you gave a lot of books, a lot of stuff. You know, there wasn't much room in there. You you knew where everything was. You better keep it organized because it's going to fall right down all over you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody complained much. Really? I was a, nobody had telephones in their offices. Really? Or anything? No. Uh, telephones were uh, they were still analog. They weren't digital. Mm-hmm. You know what that means? Yes. <laughs> uh, you spin the dial right. and all of that. It, it, it that year, but because I needed a phone, I took my choral groups all over Arizona to give uh, high school assemblies with the choir music mm-hmm. and programs. And uh, I did that even the very first year. Really? To uh, promote the college, to advertise the college. So where would you go? What, what city? We'd go to Havasu City. We would go to uh, <coughs> down to Tempe High School. We would go to Kingman High School. We would go up to uh, Winslow and St. John's and mm-hmm. Holbrook, the high schools there. And the, all these teachers knew me. So that's why I was able to pull that off. And uh, we had a bus. We bought a brand new bus here uh, after the college was here for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. A huge travel coach. 
<laughs> we had, we bought a huge travel coach, fifty passengers. Oh wow! And so we used that. It was ours, and it was a real travel coach. It wasn't a high, wasn't a school bus, mm-hmm. and uh, just like a Greyhound bus. And so, uh, interestingly enough, I grew up on the farms in Yuma, and I grew up handling big trucks, hauling big loads of hay to L.A. and San Diego mm-hmm. and uh, all that kind of stuff, hauling fruit out of Northern California back into the Yuma area uh, for sale, you know, and uh-huh. everything. And since I grew up doing that and working with all this machinery, I became the bus driver. <laughs> we had a bus driver, but he didn't, he didn't last too long. He wasn't too happy with the way things were set up. So... Uh, he um, he quit, and so they came to me and said, we have this big field trip tomorrow. Clear up the other side of Flagstaff. Can you drive the bus? I thought, sure. Uh, it was difficult because mm-hmm. uh, it had a big shifter on it, 10 speeds. Oh, gosh. And a clutch that came up about this far. It wasn't automatic. <laughs> oh, wow. Automatic transmissions were well developed by that time, but not in big machinery like that. Right. So I drove that bus over 15 years part time. I, really? I did the uh, most of the field field trips for the basketball and uh, baseball out of town games, mm-hmm. and that, that's where I got acquainted with all the uh, athletes. So they took my music appreciation classes because that would give them humanities credit. Oh, okay. And uh, they knew me well enough, they liked me, and so they took my class, and I made it worth their while. I I was not the tyrant that most people would have thought, but they learned. I, I tricked them into learning. <laughs> I even had some of them dancing the minuet. These were the <laughs> baseball players. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that was entertaining. <laughs> but that's how we learned about classical music in Mozart. Oh, really? <laughs> and they thought that was the funniest thing. I said, you guys are going to do this now. Now lock the doors so nobody sees us. <laughs> they had a ball. Those, this is how I taught. I taught by uh, trickery. <laughs> they get the students to learn. Uh, my... My choral groups were always well disciplined because they understood that to be well disciplined was the right thing to do, right. not because I forced them to. And so that's the way it always was with me. That was the kind of teacher I was. Sounds like you had really well diversified groups of students mm-hmm. in your classes. All kinds of groups. I had older people. The last several years, I had. Some classes of music appreciation that I had, I developed a, a lot of other classes of music appreciation, and so a lot of elderly people took those classes because mm-hmm. I had them at night and I had them late in the afternoon. Okay. There. And uh, they uh, they they were wonderful. I I taught them about uh, music things that they you know they were all old. Some of them. Retirement, old, old, much older than retirement age, mm-hmm. and they would come in to take my music appreciation class because they were interested in learning more about music. And I only worked with classical music. When I was teaching classes that were for university transfer, I did have units in rock music and things like that. Really? But it was not my favorite thing I did, but I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Both of my daughters were into that kind of music. Yeah. They, they kind of helped me along. <laughs> they were in high school at that time. Okay. Yeah. So these are just, I, I call a lot of this stuff, you know, useless trivia that, that uh, goes through my mind and I tell people about it. And this is how it was. Yeah, it's really We had a faculty, we had a liberal arts faculty, mm-hmm. and that took in the history and English right. and uh, philosophy and things like that. Uh, sociology, we had a really interesting uh, science department. We had a husband and wife, chemistry teachers, and they they were Karen Brown and I can't remember his first name. They were just wonderful. They were young, a young married couple. Then we had an older fellow, well, older, he was maybe pushing 40, (laughs) uh, that uh, did biology, and he was so much fun. 
We had a guy, Lyle Minkler, he hadn't been retired too long now, and he was a physics teacher. Mm-hmm. And he had a, a really funny sense of humor. He he was promoting physics. That every, so he had a bunch of pins, like a pen for a political guy. Right. And it says, take physics, you'll feel better. <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> <laughs> I still have one of those pens at home that he ca- he came up with. Never had you seen the latest uh, advertisement for physics? <laughs> have you, have you, have, do you take the science courses? Um, I did. I I'm done with them at Yavapai. So okay. <laughs> so you, those credits are just waiting now for you to go to a university. Yes. No. I guess I'm not supposed to ask you questions, but where do you plan to go to university? NAU. Oh, good. <laughs> my wife yeah. and I both graduated from there. Oh, really? In 1950. And my wife's father was president of NAU at that time. Mm-hmm. So you have these books here. Did you? Um, could you show me some of the pictures and what everything was yeah. like? Okay. Maybe uh, our first president, we've had... Uh, let me count now. Barnes, James, uh, then uh, Marianne Bamrick, uh, Paul Walker, Doreen Daly, and now Jane Horton. Oh, wow. Because those are the presidents. Mm-hmm. This was our first president. He, he left uh, before the third year was over. Okay. He had other things going on. And uh, it's too bad we can't see these in the... You uh, could lift it up a little bit. Um, I don't know if that will... <laughs> okay, that camera needs to be done on it, doesn't it? There. Mm-hmm. Here is um, gymnasium. Oh, wow. Underneath here. And the, this building had to, you have to go up here. Okay. Uh, listen, this is the big power plant, or, or the heating plant and cooling plant over here. It's underground. There's a tunnel, a huge tunnel. It's about the size of this room that runs from one end of the campus underneath this building and comes out up here. Really? Well, the other side of that would be our uh, atomic bomb, bomb <laughs> <laughs> refuge. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the first president. I forgot him. He was our third president, Joseph Russo. How could I forget him? He and I started teaching together at Prescott High School. There. Oh, here we go. Okay. The, the, this is a camera up there, yes. isn't it? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, this one here, okay. where mm-hmm. my finger is a man by the name of John Barnes, and he was our first president. And uh, he was a, a nice man. He he chose, did things, had to choose the school colors. He had he had to do all this before this college opened. Oh wow! Okay. And uh, he worked with the architects here. This other man was Joseph Russo, and he was the most wonderful man because he and I were close friends all of our teaching years from the time we started teaching till the time we retired. He became dean of education. And then later on, he became president of the college when uh, when it was time and somebody had retired. I think mm-hmm. uh, Cal James had retired at that time, and he stayed the pre- for, uh, he was the president for about oh uh, eleven or twelve years, mm-hmm. and he was a very interesting man when. I came, I taught in the elementary system in Prescott Public Schools and the high school. And later I was full-time at the high school. He was also at the high school that first year. It was 1953. Mm -hmm. And he would uh, coach football and he taught civics. Oh, wow. (laughs) Then later he became a counselor. Then later he became principal of the high school. And then that's when they brought him over here to be dean of students. Mm -hmm. And then later he became president. He was one of the finest presidents that they had. James Horton seems to me like he's going to be a very, very fine president. Already is. Mm -hmm. He's a wonderful man. He's he's been in my home. I've gotten well acquainted with him. And uh, I I enjoy him. He and his wife both. There. 
Okay. These were other administrative people. Okay. Dean of uh, Occupational Education and dean, another Dean of Students. Mm -hmm. Actually, this man here would have been classified as the Vice President. There. Dean of Instruction. He was Dean of Students. Okay. The Vice President would have more to do as uh, as Dean of Instruction or mm -hmm. vice versa. Okay. And these men I remember so well. This man was out of came in this time the other day. Um, these, these two are dead. He's still living. Lives in uh, Prescott. Uh, Wal Raven is an attorney. He's still living in Prescott. I'm going to say still living. This was 36 years ago oh, wow. that this happened here. And uh, these, this was our first meeting as a faculty. Mm -hmm. It was in the Prescott High School Auditorium, which is over where Mile High Middle School is now. Oh, okay. That was Prescott High School then. Uh, okay. The Roo Street uh, High School had not been built yet. Oh, wow. There. And I was teaching at the high school when that school was built, mm -hmm. and I had the first music room over there. And uh, this was the orientation for the faculty. This was our faculty here at oh, that wow. time. Now, uh, that auditorium held about 800 people, mm -hmm. and I'll bet they couldn't all get in there today. This was just down in the front of it. I gave many programs there because I taught at the high school for so many years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have to do all this at one time or can we continue uh, at a later time? Do you have to get all this done and wrapped up now? Yeah, we the, might be able to do it. There is a so much. I know, there so is. Much <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Uh, well. I just wanted to show you my picture. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it seemed like I could find it up there. How long do we have? Um, let's see. We have about 20 minutes left. Okay. Mm, so many of these people are dead. No? These, this lady was a chemistry teacher. She and her husband were both killed in a plane crash. Oh, wow. well, hit, and he was the husband. Oh, gosh. Uh, there was a man over here that was a counselor. He just died just a few weeks ago. Oh, wow. Well, we get over here to student body or faculty. I thought I could usually find my own picture pretty fast in here. <laughs> did you take any art classes from Ed Branson? Um, no, I did not. Okay, this is him then. Oh, wow. He didn't look like when he retired. He only retired about t three years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he stayed a lot longer than any of the rest of us did. Fashion show. Look at the fancy clothes from that time. <laughs> Can we hold Look this at, page up? Yeah. These were students, girls. Here, put it this way. Who, uh, over here. There you go. Wow. Uh, who, who had a fashion show here. Look at the clothes. <laughs> Things have changed. <laughs> Mini skirts had well been established by this time. So. <laughs> wow, those are quite different from now. Uh -huh. <laughs> And what year is this one? This is 1970. Okay. We had a campus queen that year. Oh, wow, Miss Yavapai. You know, uh, Debbie um, Kat McCoslin, that's a student uh, community events director. I know the name. Okay, well, this is her picture, and this is her husband. Oh, they don't look like that now, 36 years later. <laughs> yeah. wow. I did a musical that first year. We did South, the uh, second year, we did South Pacific. Oh, and, look at uh, that. And uh, we had a lot of props, had some good makeup artists and everything. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of fun. The first musical we did. Uh, what you meant to say? <laughs> and, uh, oh. There you go. <laughs> 
have to turn to the camera. Next time we do this, we need an extra camera we can switch on that's down on the table. Yeah, there. that'd be a good idea. So were you kind of doing the theater part of things also? Uh, I did the musical drama. We did have another fellow, an English teacher, that did the regular drama. Okay. But I did all the musical drama. We did we did a musical almost every other year, all the years after that. And start naming them up, Manuel La Mancha, uh, the King and I. Um, the funny thing happened on the way to the forum. A lot of Gilbert and Sullivan things. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> so would you direct the musicals, at, mm -hmm. um, the acting as well as the singing? Yeah. Oh, I, wow. did, I did the drama. I, was, I did a lot of drama in college. Here I am here. And this is in rehearsals for that. We, the girl was changing her clothes behind the screen. Elizabeth, was one of the basketball players. We were all laughing because he was <laughs> looking and we're like that. And that's why we were laughing there. Okay. Now, are these the students' pictures that we're passing through? The what? Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. That's uh, me directing the choir. Well, they're always very animated. I didn't always have gray hair. Pull this one up. This one's a good picture, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. And, uh... So, like a nice size choir. Right there. Okay. This, uh, this was a choir, a touring choir, mm -hmm. that went all over northern Arizona. That was very early years, but I kept doing this year after year. The mm -hmm. faces would change. Right. There. And, uh... Okay, this is pretty much what I look like then. <laughs> now, I haven't changed all that much, have I? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so here it is right here. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, okay, there I am then. Here I am now. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't tell a difference. <laughs> um, this was a program that I was giving in the cafeteria when it was in the other building over here. And this was a group of people like a Qantas Club who were large donors to this college. Oh, okay. And people like that. And so they always, all of these, many of these men always loved to see my groups because they remembered seeing them when they were at the high school. Oh, yeah. okay. And uh, <sighs> we have the picture of the first graduation in here in this book. Uh, mm hmm but uh, hmm, this is a little ensemble I had. This young man is Bart Evans. He's now uh, one of the foremost respected choir directors in the state of Arizona, high really? school level. Uh huh. He's in Tempe Dobson High School in Tempe, and he's one of my students. He he was with me in the high school. He was with me two years here. Oh, then wow. then he went to NIU. Uh, these were, what these were, <laughs> we had everything at Western. We had a bunch of the cheerleaders were dressed in little sh skimpy shirts with Western style, uh, uh, you know, and hats mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was Bart, these two, this and this girl is very close. Very, very dear sweet girl lives here in Prescott now. And uh, mm -hmm. Jill would be about 58 years old now. Barton's about the same. And uh, these were things about the uh, South Pacific. These were dramatic things over here. These were musical. Okay. There. And this was my picture here. And this was our head of the athletic department for years. Her name was Marilyn... Uh, Merritt? Merritt, yes. Uh -huh. And this is my picture here. I'm okay. starting to get some gray hair, it looks like. <laughs> and so, anyway, this is one of our famous bull riders. He was also base. No, he was he was our bull rider. He wasn't a baseball player, nor he was, uh, well, nor was he a um, baseball player or a basketball player. And we had this kind of group. Here, here at the college. So you had a bull riding group? Yeah, a uh, rodeo. A rodeo, uh -huh. wow. <laughs> and, uh... That's changed a little. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, 
and those are some of them. I drove the baseball team to, they had a world uh, baseball world series, community college world series in Hutchinson, Kansas, or no, uh, in, uh, in, in Colorado, mm-hmm. near Mont Rose, a town near Mont Rose, and uh, I watched 25 baseball games. I'm not a sports person. I never was in sports. Uh-huh. Uh, I was a big, heavy, strong farm kid that uh, was stronger, bigger and stronger than all of my contemporaries in high school, including the baseball player, mm-hmm. uh, basketball players. Uh, but I never took any sports. I was just a gentle giant that went around. <laughs> I could hold the uh, star quarterback over my head at Lions Lane. And uh, everything, the, my friends in Yuma, when I go for a reunion still, tease me about that. But <laughs> we had a ball. And if, they, if anybody bothered them, they came and told me. And I... <laughs> well, okay. This was a drama teacher here, Bob Koch. Now, he taught pretty much longer than any of the rest of us. And mm-hmm. uh, this was a librarian, a history teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a, a wonderful person. He, he was, uh, his last name was James. And uh, he took his own life. He was oh. in depression, you know. Just couldn't quite handle it. Mm-hmm. He took his own life before he retired. And we were just all devastated because we loved this guy so. And uh, so, okay. These are the two coaches. Basketball coach, baseball coach. Mm-hmm. Gary Ward and Dave Brown. And here's Lynn Mary again. <laughs> oh, wow. And she was head of the girls and later became athletic director of the whole, the whole oh, wow. uh, okay. department there. And this was Bob Hall, a uh, humanity teacher, wonderful man. Mm-hmm. One of the most learned men in the area of humanities and arts and things like that. And he died about a year ago oh. there. But, you know, we we're all getting older. He was older than I, I am there. So you probably want to know. So would you say the faculty has changed between here and now as far as the type of faculty and their expertise? Uh, I think uh, the quality of the faculty is no different. Mm -hmm. The quality of our faculty. We had some of the most learned people and everything. We just have more of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, no, I I think we've always had a a wonderful, high-quality faculty here at this Mm -hmm. college. And this is one thing that school board, board of governors, and the first president uh, did was to go out and find the best they could. I don't know in choosing me if that was the best. <laughs> I, I felt good about <laughs> I'm it sure though. It was. <laughs> <laughs> they, it, it's turned out well though, because mm-hmm. look at the music department now, and they started yeah. the whole thing. That's there. amazing. You can go ask Will Fisher about that. He did a he dedicated a program to me, two programs to me, really? uh, in the past uh, ten years. Mm-hmm. Big programs. Uh, Do you attend all the programs still? What? Do you attend the programs still, the music programs? Oh yes. Not uh, probably not as much as I, I should. This is what this quadrangle looked like out here. Had the two flagpoles and uh, Let's see, I'm trying to get this. Okay, this is the big stair. Well, it came from the, uh, where the cars drive up above, Mm -hmm. the big stairwell. And uh, these are the two flagpoles, and I don't know if they're still there or not. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, right down here, these square things that used to be all over the campus were called kiosks. We had, they were bulletin boards and things like that. Oh. And they were made out of redwoods so you could stick thumbtacks or staples up against, put posters up and all that kind of stuff. They were all over the campus mm-hmm. there. And uh, here is the outside of the gym right here. Mm-hmm. And looking over here is that building is there now, but it wasn't then. Nor was the performance hall out here. It was in that area. Look where the, all the cars are parked here. And oh. this uh, stairway came up up here and behind this building okay this was the 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 uh, gym was below this 
Okay. Here's the windows to the gym way, that are way up high. Uh huh. Right here. And over here was the part that was the two story part. You could walk in there to the nursing and on down the hall. So this is where we are now, is over here. Uh huh. And they've added another building onto the end, end of this out there, I noticed. Right. Because we used to park right down below there. Oh, okay. And uh, that was known as faculty parking. <laughs> <laughs> At some perks. <laughs> there. Uh, they made a big thing. Uh, <laughs> this area is the first room, one room schoolhouse. Oh. This man is Governor Nan. His name is Jack uh -huh. Wilson. And, uh, okay, here we go. Now, this, uh, this was the full choir. This is me here. Uh -huh. This uh, was graduation, actually. And uh, it is trumpet trio. Let's see, Rushula, Huckin Smith, and uh, Hansberger. <laughs> a French name and two German names. And my trumpet trio that played. Uh, this is the school board. And they would be getting ready to hand out uh, diplomas. Yeah. And let's see. Ya. This was in the gymnasium. Look at the color guard coming up. Everything we had. Could, the only place we had to do anything was a gymnasium in mm -hmm. those days. That was it. Wow. Or we'd go over and use Hendricks Auditorium, which was the Mile High School, where I showed you that first. So where did they have graduation? In the, in the in gym. The this is graduation. This is graduation. Okay. And I, I had the choir was uh, right back in the corner up here. Uh -huh. And uh, these are those rises that I unpacked and everything. And uh, the way I'm dressed here, in those days... Uh, I always dressed with a suit or a blazer and shirt and tie. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, up until probably about the first 20 years. Then I got a little more lax. <laughs> Some of the teachers were wearing hiking boots and Levi's and uh, plaid shirts and oh, all of mm -hmm. that. <laughs> oh. Well, looks like we're almost out of time. Is there anything else you want to? Well, about? oh, there's all kinds of things I yes, can tell I you. Yes, I know. It's so, not quite enough time. <laughs> <laughs> but I've enjoyed doing this. It's good to, good to reminisce. Yes, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> it's greatly appreciated. <laughs> now, is the uh, young man going to come turn the thing off, or shall we just kind of slip out? Um, I think we can go get someone to get it for us, and they'll take it out for us. Oh, thank you so much. It was wonderful meeting you. Oh, okay. Me. And then can you turn this off? Um, yeah. I think they'll do it all for us. Okay. So I just have to go get, uh, I believe her name was Ruth. All right. And, and uh, to all of you, a cheery goodbye. <laughs> thank you.